Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We're excited to have our friend Kristen Bergender joining us here. She is excited to talk more about her passion, remodeling, and uh, so much more. Let me have her introduce herself. Uh, by the way, she's an interior designer, and it's Kristen, K R I S T I N A N N, interiordesign.com. Welcome back today, my friend. How are you? I'm fantastic. Doing good. Oh, good to have <laughs> you here. And I love yeah. you're in the cozy mode. It's like that time of season. Where I, where do you live again? Uh, I am in the Indianapolis area. So we're actually having like an, an unseasonably warm fall so far. So it's been really nice and extremely colorful. <laughs> and I think a lot of it's just because it's been so warm. So all yeah. the trees, you know, the leaves haven't fallen off the trees as fast as they usually do. So yeah, I am in comfy mode today for sure. <laughs> Beautiful. We're excited to have you here to talk more um, about what you do. So tell us about the interior design business. Give us a little bit of your background and then we'll sure. kind of go into today's uh, topic because a lot of people want to get their homes redone, but it's a big process and we have questions. <laughs> sure, sure. So, um, yes, I have a interior design firm and do pretty much in some capacity, a little bit everything, um, when it comes to your home from uh, kitchen bath remodels, 2d, 3d renderings. Um, I do staging consultations also for other realtors who have clients that are bringing a home to the market and they need some advice. I get very detailed and thorough. I do new call, new home um, construction consulting, paint color consults, um, just a wide variety of different services. And then I'm also a licensed real estate agent. So those two go <laughs> hand in hand and they, they work do. well together and they keep me busy. <laughs> do you get and, a lot of clients with the real estate business that hire you afterwards after you sell the home? It's like, oh yeah. hey, I can help you with this because you become friends with them. And oh, that's yeah. awesome. So you get yeah. Double whammy of clients <laughs> sometimes. <Yeah. laughs> All on right. The front end and on the back end of that, for sure. Like there's a, a home that I just um, sold last week. And part of the process for listing that home was a pretty extensive remodel project. So they had purchased a home, moved out, and then we remodeled their house and wow. then put it in the market. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I do those things like, you know, wearing both hats multiple times a day. That's amazing. <laughs> but obviously it increases the in value. So it's worth the investment. You're still making more, but you'll make more overall. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's a, it's a value that I can add to my clients, right? Like everybody always says what, you know, what, what, um, what makes you different or what can you bring to the table? That's a little bit different than what somebody else might be able to do based on whatever service or, you know, that they're looking for from a person, whether it's from a real estate or a design perspective. So I think having that background in that field, because I'm in and out of houses all day long, it's a great thing. So awesome. Well, let's talk today about what do you need to be prepared for when meeting with a designer? Let's start there. Okay. So uh, first and foremost, you know, being that I work in a wide variety of different things, I'm going to go ahead and just pick a couple of topics to kind of focus on. So then that way um, I can provide a little bit more candid um, advice and or dive into a little bit more detail. So initially I tend to have a phone consultation. It's complimentary with um, anyone who's looking for a service, whether it's a paint consult, a kitchen remodel, drawings, no matter what it is, we always get on the phone first because uh, I try to eliminate a lot of what we may be talking about in person which is billable time um, before I even get there. And so there's a lot of questions that I will ask the client over the phone initially in order to try to have an understanding of what we will be talking about in person, as well as kind of what direction we might be going before I even walk in the door. So even in that initial phone consultation, you know, and some people are a little bit fuzzy on the direction. They're not really sure what kind of service they're looking for initially. So in um, the area of say a kitchen remodel, I'll use that as, as a topic. Um, many people are either doing a facelift or let's just say they're gutting an entire room, right? And so having an understanding of what your project looks like, whatever it might be, um, prior to having um, any kind of contact with a designer, 
also having an understanding of what your capacity of um, service that you need might be. Uh, are you willing to do a little bit of legwork to help keep the cost of the design services down? Um, do you have a budget in mind for your project is a huge one, um, as well as a timeline, a reasonable timeline um, that you need to have in place. So having a few of those key things um, initially, uh, and, and again, some people may not have a full understanding of what that looks like until we dive into uh, different services or different things that I can do for them. And every designer works very different. And so I usually always tell people, talk to a number of different designers um, when it comes to furniture, furnishings, things of that nature. There are some designers that work with very specific product lines, and maybe those particular product lines are not within your price budget or the type of projects that they work on are not within a budget that you're looking for. Um, I don't have very specific lines that I deal with, and so we have the whole wide world at our disposal which is fantastic, but also overwhelming at the same time. It may not be the right fit for everyone. So I think having those initial conversations up front and having an idea of um, some key elements within whatever project it is that you're working on, but also know the right questions to ask um, that particular person, when you are con you know, conversating with them on the phone, what, um, what does your hourly rate look like? How does your billing process work? Um, and have an understanding of whether or not how they operate is going to work within the service and the budget for a designer that you have in mind. Um, I think time um, tends to sometimes get lost in translation as far as people have an understanding of how much time we put in to certain services. <laughs> um, I would say, you know, when I'm working with someone for, for a, um, a bathroom remodel, for example, there's a wide variety of different ways that you can go out. If you're willing to do some of the, the legwork up front, and throughout the process, meaning sourcing some of the finishes and selections and things of that nature, you will save yourself quite a bit of money. But if we are going to um, be full on service handholding, and I am thoroughly involved in that process all throughout the way, um, then your budget for a designer is going to have to be quite a bit more extensive. So understanding what you feel capable of doing in any project, whether you're looking for furniture, decor, artwork, flooring, paint, a remodel project, having an understanding of what you feel comfortable doing and what you would like the designer to do from the beginning is very, very crucial. Um, I think that um, most designers will uh, work on a retainer, I do that as well. Uh, so it kind of depends on if people are comfortable with that process. Uh, when I have larger projects, I typically tend to do that. Um, so I would say from the initial consultation, the most important thing to have ready for your designer is if you are looking at a particular space or a particular room, what tends to be a struggle for me is a lot of people tend to bounce around a whole lot and not stay focused on, you know, what we're working on when we're, when we when I'm there. And again, it's, it's all about time. And so having an understanding that every single thing takes time, whether it's communication via email, communication over the phone, text messages, sourcing products, all of these things take time. Um, and so to have an understanding of what that looks like, you know, if you, for example, Jill, were to go and try to find, you know, two or three different vanities for your master bathroom, how long do you think it would take you to find those pieces? A long time. A long yeah. time. Yeah, really <laughs> a long time. It's funny. I've done that. My 
My house was redone before I moved in, but very basically by someone who bought it, flipped it and did the right thing. But I keep thinking like, well, as you mentioned, your notes, I want to knock down that wall of my kitchen and expand it to the living room. I can only think about that. Oh my gosh, this process that goes with that, let alone picking out vanities for the bathroom, like it, like cabinets, flooring. Ah, uh, oh my gosh, countertops, backsplash. Can you even knock down the wall? How do you know if it's not a low bearing wall? There's a lot to that. <laughs> there is. Well, and two, you know, when I, when, if, a, if a client, you know, in any particular project, trying to give a designer some visuals. So a lot of times, um, if we are working on a remodel project, I will tell a client, you know, through Pinterest or through house to create some visuals or have some visuals readily available, either when the desire comes or when we decide how we're going to move forward with the project. And then within those visuals, what do you like? So if you're, if you're, um, working with the designer on a bathroom and you're going to provide them two or three different photos of a bathroom that you like, well, what about those photos? Do you like kind of yeah. honing in on that? Yeah. Um, is it the light? Is it the light fixtures? Is it the vanity? Is it the colors Is it the countertops? Um, because I'm not in your brain. <laughs> and so fishing for that information is going to take more time um, in, in order for us to kind of work back and forth and kind of try to determine the style and the overall finishes that you're looking for within your budget, because I can go and, you know, create a mood board or what have you for a particular room. And I can spend eight hours doing that. But if I put all of that together and you don't like half of the selections, we're starting all over again. Mm -hmm. So, so it's good to come with printouts, I guess, to research online, go to stores, visuals, pictures, to have them ready to present to you, whether they're emailing them or showing you, that's okay, a good start. So you could do some homework beforehand, which saves time, which saves money. Absolutely. And doesn't waste time, doesn't waste money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Preparation is definitely key. Um, most definitely. And there are a lot of people that I have spoke with where because they don't have a full grasp of maybe what a kitchen remodel looks like from a cost standpoint or, a, you know, flooring, for example, do we refinish floors or do we put a new product in? Sometimes they don't even have a budget or have an understanding of what their budget is when they're initially starting. And that is even more challenging. <laughs> well, uh, I just have a random question about like, for example, in the kitchen, right? If you rip out your kitchen cabinets, um, do you have to redo the floor too? Because they're kind of attached to it normally? Is that usually what happens? Or well, it kind of depends because sometimes the flooring is ran underneath the cabinets and yeah. sometimes not. Sometimes it runs up to it. The other thing to oh. consider too is, um, is their tile underneath the vanity. However, we're going to put a vinyl plank flooring product in. And so now you're at your vanity sitting elevated oh. because thickness of that tile versus the thinness or at an LV ripping people. up the tile which is another expense but uh, that's the, probably the best way to do it but the mess and the time to rip that up yep yeah yep. I have an old tile kitchen in my kitchen it I have an old tile kitchen in my kitchen makes sense in my house <laughs> in my kitchen in my foyer and then they the builder the guy the guy who redid it did it cheaply he put saddles into like the living room the dining room and it's wood floor okay so it nice looks like oh you have wood floors but now it's a nightmare because if I ever want to do my kitchen it's up on this platform of tile and it's like you're probably better off ripping it all out and then how do you oh gosh I don't know how they're geniuses how they can figure that out like you know to make it even but that always bothers me I said if when I redo my kitchen one day I'm gonna have to rip up this whole tile cement kitchen I don't know how they do that I can only imagine <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um so I have I have two different projects that I am working on right now where you know the client was like, well, can't we just you know pull the tile out um existing? Like she didn't quite understand why we needed to take her vanity out. And I said, Well, because we're putting a whole different style of product in, so there's extra cost involved. We've got to disconnect all the plumbing, we've got to literally pull the whole vanity out, even though we're not replacing it in order to replace your flooring because it's a completely different product and the floor runs underneath the vanity. So some of those discovery things are determined during an in-person consultation and that will affect what the client may think that they have for a budget because they didn't realize that that was an item that we're going to have in discussion. Right. Um, and I think that um, the, the biggest key for people who are not working on one particular room, for example, 
if we are focused on one particular room, we're going to stay within that room. But when there are, when you do have a number of different odd, odd projects, if you will, um, by that prime example, yeah. I have a, a client right now where he is, um, picking out um, a couch and rugs and drapery and a desk and some lighting fixtures throughout. And then we're bouncing upstairs to bedding and, you know, all of these things. Um, in those particular situations, some kind of visual or direction um, is absolutely crucial because mm -hmm. if I'm starting from scratch and trying to pick your brain on the things that you like, all of that like the discovery process, if you will, is extremely time consuming. If you don't have any visuals, very specific visuals of any kind um, to present a, a designer, understanding, do you like stain products, painted products? Do you like nickel? Do you like gold? Do you, you know? um, otherwise, if you are okay with the designer, literally just putting it together, regardless of what it is, and, um, and, and then you're good with all of those decisions. Um, you know, that's a completely different ball game. So, and I will tell you 99% of my clients, it does not work that way. Everybody has an idea of what they like and what they don't like, but a lot of times they just have a hard time bringing it together. Um, so I think that there are a lot of really key, uh, things that you can do as the client um, in order to kind of try to set everybody up for success. Another thing that I do is um, send a questionnaire out. So depending on um, how I am going to be involved in a process, I will send a questionnaire out to the client just to kind of get in their brain a little bit and get them answering questions that they may or may not know that they needed to answer in order to help me do my job. Um, and so that um, is something that um, a really good designer should be doing for you uh, just to kind of try to streamline that process a little bit as well. So that might be something that you'd like to ask is, you know, how do you source your projects and how do we go about trying to make selections or move forward with the project? Um, and how can I feed that information to you? So I think the client asking as many questions as the designer can be very crucial in order to determine if they're going to work well together um, in the long run. So um, definitely talking to a couple of different people is always a good opportunity. Good. And just remind everyone how we could reach out to you. We still have uh, 10 minutes left, but I just want to make sure we do that. Yeah. Uh, so my cell phone uh, is the best direct number for me. It's 317-376-3351. And my website is www.kristin, K-R-I-S-T-I-N. And it's Ann Interior Design, Kristen Ann Interior Design. All right. Thank you so much. We still got more to talk about. What's next on the agenda? Okay. So um, I wanted to have a... The other thing that um, I, <clears throat> with regards to expectations for um, projects and communication and things of that nature, um, in any situation, I think too, something that will be valuable for you and for a designer is that I'm a big like next steps person. So if I leave a meeting and we are going to um, approach what the next steps look like and then a timeline that goes with that. Um, and sometimes, you know, assigning tasks to myself, assigning tasks to my client. And again, the client have an understanding of what they want to take on. So if if um, if a client says, I'm, I'm OK with sourcing some project or sourcing some items in order to uh, reduce the cost, have an understanding of what those items are that you're okay with looking for. Um, so then that way I'm not many times I'm doing work over here. I'm, I'm looking for a couch or I'm looking for a rug <laughs> and my client's doing the same thing because I was under the impression they wanted me to look for it. And that was the conversation that we had. Um, I've had clients where I've been looking for rugs because that's what they asked me to do. And then I send them the options and they literally bounce back at me and they're like, oh my gosh, I just bought this at Target yesterday. Mm -hmm. what do you think? <laughs> and it's like, ah, but we said I was looking for the rugs. <laughs> yeah. 
So I think, you know, making sure that if, if there is a understanding between you and the designer, I, I think the expectations and the communication is incredibly important. And so the agreement that you have in place and whom is going to do what is kind of sticking <laughs> with that. And if you go outside of that wheelhouse for any reason, you get squirrely and, you know, you pop into a, a cabinet company and you find something you like and you know that your designer is working in the background on that. The very first thing you need to do is pick up the phone and call them or contact them or do something to stop them to continue working on something <laughs> that you are working on at the same time. So um, that happens to me a lot. <laughs> it really does, you know, and, and then I feel bad, right? Because like this yeah. literally just happened to me the other day. I was locating rugs for a client's dining room. I sent her, you know, three to five different options and, and she... <laughs> she's it took her like a week to get back to me and she says oh my gosh I I bought this one it was on sale and what do you think <laughs> and I'm like well gosh that kind of stinks because now I feel bad I I'm charging you all that time to find rugs and you didn't buy any of them because <laughs> you source the product yourself. yeah <laughs> so again I think having and that you know we we all have our our we're all exposed to the internet, right? Everybody's searching. I mean, shoot, if you start, the other thing that, that is daunting is, is if you even Google a light fixture or a rug or mm -hmm. a chair, um, Facebook is going to start feeding them to you left and right and left and right. And you're going to start clicking on things on a regular basis. <laughs> Because the internet follows you around anywhere it that does. you go. It does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I think, I think the budget, the timing um, that, that you are willing to invest and that you would like for the, the designer to invest, who has what tasks. Um, and if you're working simultaneously on something, ensure that you're not looking for things or sourcing things that you have told the designer that they are going to do so that we're not, um, we're not both working on the same tasks at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, expectations and communication is incredibly important in any business relationship. Um, and so just kind of having all of those things in mind. And if you don't understand, ask, ask before you do it. Or um, if something seems unclear, um, I'm a big, you know, write things out, uh, list of questions, you know, and sometimes you don't think of those questions until after the person leaves. Um, and so I think just keeping that open flow going is, is incredibly important. And again, if you don't understand, yeah. um, or if something seems unclear, make sure that you ask because it just, it stinks when, when you're paying funds for something. And at the end of the day, you feel like you're not getting that back out of it because there's a misunderstanding of the process, uh, if you will. So communication is yeah. key. That's what I got out of that. Yes. <laughs> Most and definitely. to prepare and talk about everything ahead of time, you want to yeah. prevent miscommunication in the future. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I guess kind of in closing, you know, I just wanted to remind everyone again of you know, the services that I, um, that I do, they're not, it's not cookie cutter by any means. I do not have a <laughs> menu of options, if you will. Many designers will have a, um, you know, this is what I charge to style a room, for example. Um, and so I don't work that way and, and different designers work in that way. Um, and so having a, to know what it is that you are looking for, mm -hmm. um, I'm very versatile when it comes to that. And there are some other designers who are not. Um, and so I think it's just kind of important to have an understanding of what it is that you're looking for to make sure that the designer that you hire is doing the things that you would like them to do. And it's going to be a good fit. Otherwise, at the end of the day, everybody's just going to be upset and frustrated. <laughs> very true. And you speak from experience. How many years have you been doing this for now? Uh, about 10 years, actually. So a little over seven years with with um, an actual business where I am physically, you know, charging mm -hmm. people and, you know, full yeah. blown. Um, but um, definitely for over 10 years have, have remodeled 
a number of projects and work with things with friends and family and from a personal level as well. So beautiful. Well, Kristen, remind us again, all the ways we can contact you. Sure. Uh, so my website again is www.kristinanninteriordesign.com. That's Kristen with two eyes. And a direct phone number is 317-376-3351. Perfect. And if someone wants to reach out, do you offer an initial consult, a discovery type call? Yes. So that is complimentary. And then uh, an in-person consultation typically will be about an hour unless we are for sure going to be doing measurements, things of that nature. I always tell people to um, plan for about an hour and a half. An initial consultation is $100 and then we bill about every you know, quarter hour to half hour after that. Mm -hmm. Got it. Well, thank you so much. Always a pleasure having you here. Thank you for being so thorough as always. And <laughs> always great to see your face. And thank you for being here again on your show. Excited to have you. Thank you. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.